right, everybody, it's been a day. So I recorded what I thought would be my third video and I kept making so many mistakes and forgetting things and let this be a lesson, Audrey needs notes. So we're gonna try this again and hopefully I'll be satisfied. I, I finished the video and I mean, it wasn't overly long anyway, but I got to the end of it and I was like, I think I forgot a bunch of stuff. Turns out I forgot a bunch of stuff. And I was like, well, I can talk about it next time, but I really just didn't like how, I didn't like how many mistakes and things I had. You know, it's informal anyway, as Mary Barry says, it's informal. That just means messy, Mary, okay? <laughs> it was a messy video. So we're gonna try this again. So I am Audrey Marine, and uh, you can find me on Instagram at Stitch Stitch Speed. Several, so many of you have found me here on YouTube and I'm so thankful. I have almost a thousand subscribers now. So I wanted to say thank you. I wanted to say a special thank you to Sarah of So Me Sarah. Uh, she found me, she's actually in Ireland and she found me and, and she watched my video and left a little message that was very nice. So Sarah, I wanted to say thank you because I watched your last video and uh, it cost me some money. <laughs> I was like adding things to cart as I was watching, uh, but it was it was fun and and she has this like beautiful mellifluous voice and you know I could listen to her talk about stitching, so it was nice. Thank you for finding me. And then uh, I wanted to say thank you to Rebecca for her many mess or many comments that she left on my on my YouTube videos. I think she was commenting as she was watching, which was funny. My favorite comment of hers though was. I like you. You're quirky. <laughs> that made me laugh. And uh, that reminded me I wanted to share with you guys a new word that I learned in French. So I, I got back from France last week. Uh, Ryan and his parents and I went and I have a pretty like a pretty proficient in French but of course you're always learning new words and stuff. And so I did learn a new word not while I was there just when I was doing alternative research about things. So I want to let you guys know that the word in French for quirky, you're probably already familiar with. It's biscornu. It means quirky or weird or slightly off, which makes sense because if biscornu, you're taking two squares and sort of putting them together, not quite right, not quite the right way to make that little form. So I thought that was interesting and I thought you guys would appreciate that if I shared that with you. So I have, I actually have haul and I don't want you to get used to this because it's mostly my mother's fault, <laughs> but I'm not going to say no. So my last video, I talked about things that I was working on, things that I finished and things that I wanted. And my mom apparently took my wish list as a shopping list. So she bought some stuff and sent it off to me. And actually it was like the day that I got to France. I still have like nine more to go. And she's like, there's going to be a package waiting for you when you get home. Oh, and I got to wait all that way. But uh, it was it was very nice to come home to some stitchy stuff, some surprises. And uh, this little pin here that I made should give you a hint as to one of the things that she bought for me. But we'll get into it here. Uh, it was It was nice to come home to a fun package like that. Um... It was a long trip. We'll say that. <laughs> it was a long trip. So I kind of figured it would be cross stitching stuff. I just kind of had that feeling. And so I wasn't so surprised by the hats items that were included and I will show you. But there was one thing that really surprised me. Mom included this and this is a Mill Hill. I knew about this. I love llamas and alpacas. I knew that this existed and I was like, oh, that's cute. Do I need it? And then of course it shows up in that package. So this was the thing that surprised me the most, honestly. And it's already stitched. It's already stitched. I went through the package and then I called my mom and you know, thank you for everything. But then it was like the next day or just the day after, must have just been the next day that I just sent her a picture of this finished product, no caption. She's like, oh my God, you already finished it. I'm like, well, yeah, it's so little. So this is a Mill Hill. This is pretty new. I think this is, oh, this is from this year. And uh, it did not take long at all. The thing that took the longest were all these color changes down here in the flowers. But, and she's already up on my fridge. Already got a magnet already up on the fridge. Mill Hill comes out with a bunch of new kits. 
every year and uh, they've got this Santa series that I like. I make their Santa ornaments. The Santas though that they came out with for this year are Australia Santas. So there's one Santa holding a koala and one Santa with a couple kangaroos and one Santa with a little kiwi bird. But they don't really look like Santas. He's like in, you know, cargo shorts and Hawaiian shirts and stuff. So I'm not really sure about those. I kind of want my Santas to look like Santas, but they're fun. And considering our house was full of Australians here earlier this year, I, I was like, oh, well, maybe I'll do that. So that was included in the package that mom sent. The other thing that she surprised me with, uh, last time I talked about this sweetheart tree pattern that I had purchased. I found this at Persnickety Stitchers in Zionsville and I stitched this. It took hardly any time at all. Turned out really cute and look how tiny it is. This is on 32 and this is how small it is. Gives you an idea. So, uh, and I mentioned that I wanted all of the itty bitty kitties and she tried to buy four, but one was unavailable, discontinued, out of print, whatever. So it wasn't, wasn't available anymore. But I got this Sandy Claus. This is what I mean. Santa looks like Santa, right? We know who it is. This is really cute. So that will eventually be stitched and put on the tree. And then this one, and I love Halloween. I like Kitty's got a little orange bow here and this little spider, he's fun. I really love Halloween. I need more Halloween decor. And then this one is another summertime kitty. So mom and I were talking. She was like, that could go on the same fabric as the one you already did. And I, yep, I already had that idea as soon as I saw it. So I've got room down here. And then I got, uh, I asked her last time, sort of in, in the video actually, like, do you have any fabric to finish the back? And then she's like, yeah, got some red stuff. So my, I got some red cord because I thought I would finish these into little pillows and then put a cord from the top two corners so that I could hang it on a door. And then I also found to put on the bottom some really fun tassels. <laughs> these tassels are so big compared to this. I don't care. They're cute. They're cute. So I'm excited to do that. And then um, mom also sent some hats as I, as I mentioned. So let me show you. This is the first one that I bought. This was the first hats pattern that I got. I love this one, Hannah Campbell. And I have the 103s and the fabric to do it. So I'm excited to start her. And since my last video, I have used 103s and I love them. So it makes me feel really good about moving forward with this on 45 count. I almost said 46, but it's actually a 45 legacy. Because this is on 40. I've worked with 40 for some other things. And I think the 103s on 45 is going to be manageable. Now, a lot of this, people are talking about how a lot of this is over one but I can do it. I can do it. So that's the one that I bought for myself. But then in my last video, I was talking about the other ones that I wanted eventually. Well, mom hurt now, <laughs> now. So she was like adding to cart. So she got me Ann Thomas, which I love. This has a lot of dense stitching. So even though it has a lot of negative space throughout here, all this dense stitching here, I know is going to take a while. So it's going to, this one's going to take a little while, but I want, I don't know what fabric it is that they used for this. I'm gonna have to look. But this looks like a, this looks like a sand dune sort of thing. I'll have to look for some darker fabric. Speaking of darker fabric, she also got the Alexander's, which is supposed to be stitched on Coco, Weeks Dye Works Coco. But it, this is photographing so light. And even when you go to Hands Across the Sea, when you go to their website, the photographs make it look really light, like it's a really light fabric. So if you have stitched it or started to stitch it on a darker fabric, I would love to see it. So tag me if you're on Instagram, I wanna see it. Cause I got, since she bought me the 103s for this, I'm ready to go once I get the fabric. So I gotta make my choices. This looks like it would look good on a light fabric, but because the colors 
are so vibrant, it would definitely show up well on a darker fabric. So, choices to make. And then she got Maria Yu in. I really like this one. I think it was Joe Florence who stitched, like she started it and she's got this section done, I think. She put satin stitches in the flower voluntarily. Like it looks good, but I'm not doing it. Looks nice, Joe, but I'm not doing satin stitches there. Uh, and then she, there was another one in the package and I was like, I didn't mention this on my video. So how does she know that I like it? <laughs> she got Mrs. Campbell. Well, I talked to her on the phone and she's like, I just like the border. <laughs> I like the border too, mom. But I also like the birds. Yep. So this bird is from Mrs. Campbell. Uh, I don't have most of these colors. So all I did was I went through the pattern and you can do this if you have it. Turn to page 11 and I can't show you because I can't show you the pattern, but it's all in color. So what I did was I looked at the color pattern of the bird and then I selected some 103s from my collection for Hannah Campbell and then the stuff that mom had purchased me for the Alexanders. And I like laid them out on my desk, kind of how the colors in the bird were laid out in the pattern and selected them. And I just stitched it like that and it turned out so well. And then this A is also in the Mrs. Campbell pattern. So I really like it. I think it turned out well. Uh, and then if you guys haven't seen Hands Across the Sea, it was a month or two or something ago that they put out the that set of three tea towels and they sold out like, you know, like they were going out of business. They, they are taking pre-orders now. And yes, mom, I will take them for Christmas. <laughs> or whatever. Uh, so if you guys are interested in getting those tea towels, Nicola posted that she's taking pre-orders for the next batch, I guess. Anyway, but it was funny that mom included this because then I went onto my 123 Stitch wish list. And even if you don't want to buy from 123 Stitch, you know, it's easy to keep a wish list on there. And this was in the wish list. And I was like, oh, well, I guess I can delete that. So yeah, good job, mom. So lots of goodies and it was very nice to get them. So thank you again, mom. It's fun to get happy mail, right? I mean, it's fun to like get crap that you ordered for yourself, but it's fun when somebody else surprises you with it. Uh, so this pin that I made, I wanted to make a new pin for my third floss tube. And I've got some other pins, but I, I wanted to make something new because I got these frames. I found them from an Etsy shop. It's called Art Base, A-R-T-B-A-S-E, all one word on Etsy. And I ordered these large ones and then I ordered a couple smaller ones in different colors and one had a slightly different shape. And they're very inexpensive and it comes with everything you need to put this whole item together. And I obviously turned it into a brooch, but you can make them into ornaments or, you know, they have small ones that would be good for necklaces or little charms or something. And so they come with the frame like this and you can see that it's sanded and smoothed and it's got a nice stain on it. And then it comes with this piece that's padded. So you finish your stitching, you wrap it around this and secure the back and then you can glue it into your frame. And then it comes with a nice back that matches the frame. You secure that there. And then it also comes with hardware to put in there. So you can see that I've got that little pin there. So, I mean, it really looks like a proper hoop. Now you can get those laser cut ones from Michael's Hobby Lobby, whatever, that are really cheap. You get like, what, five or $10 or something. But this whole setup was like $9. And the smaller ones are even less. So, cause I think I got, I think I got five of them for less than 40 bucks. Yeah, it wasn't bad. 
and it came pretty quickly uh, and it was easy enough to put together. There was a little slip inside that basically said the frames are fragile, especially for first time purchasers, but I didn't have any troubles putting, uh, putting this together. And then the two smaller ones I made into gifts and have already sent them off. So uh, those are gone, so I cannot show you. I, ha I took a photo, but I don't want to share that because I think they were received. I hope they survived the trip, but I'm not quite sure. So I, I can share that next time. So let's see. Uh, I wanted to talk about, and I'm saying this out loud so I don't forget. I wanted to talk about the few finishes that I have. The one whip that I've managed to work on in the last three weeks that is the one thing that has not been finished. And then I'd like to show some purchases from my travels and then talk about some things that I'm excited about, some plans that I have. So let's do that. So first thing first, uh, let's do the couple finishes that I have. Uh, when we went to France, we left, uh, we went from Indianapolis to Newark to Charles de Gaulle and I took three projects with me and I finished one and started the second and didn't touch the third. But the first one that I started and the one that I finished was this cuckoo bird sampler. It was so quick to stitch and it was really easy to stitch on the plane because I didn't have to deal with color changes. I just had to, you know, keep track of the counting and everything, but it's really cute. I like this one. So this is a heart and hand pattern and I have sub I have subsequently found that they have a bunch of other birds. They've got, I mean, this one was on the back, so they've got the hummingbird, but they've got a bluebird and a red bird or, or do they call it a cardinal or something? Uh, and there are, I think there's also a blackbird one. So if you wanted to have like a little collection of little birdie samplers, you can do that. And this is stitched with Weeks Dye Works Chestnut Floss on Wallaby from Number 12 Stitch Co. And Nicola of Number 12 Stitch Co. is based in Australia. Uh, and I ordered, I don't know, four or five different color fabrics from her. And they're all Zweigart based. And very nice and soft. And I love the colors. I really like them. So she is taking a bit of a break right now. Uh, her shop will reopen on the 1st of July, I think she said, and then I will be right there ready to order more. Because I really like her colors. In fact, my second finish, the piece that I started after I finished the Cuckoo Bird, is this Maker and Mender by Brenda Gervais. This one was on my wish list, and then I went to Always in Stitches, uh, which is in Noblesville, or Fishers, I think it's Noblesville. And I was looking for one thing, and then I saw this, and I was like, yep, I'm going to take that. I don't even remember what it was that I actually went there for, but I got this. So it was a good purchase. So I did start and finish that, and I used another one of the fabrics from Number 12 Stitch Co. This is Antiquity. So if I hold it like this, you can see that it is modeled. There is... There are a couple different colors within it, but it's such a light and delicate modeling that I don't think, you know, it's not like creme brulee or something like that that has a more pronounced modeling. I really like this one. I use the called for colors, except I did not have uh, the two DMC flosses, which are 611 and 830. Uh, 611 and 830, those are one is a brown and one is a green. So instead of, you know, it would only cost like a buck 20 to go out and buy those two DMC. But I thought, well, why don't I just see what I have in my variegated thread stash? So for the brown, which was going to be all the lettering and the basket, this basket, scissors, uh, I chose putty, which I think is a week's dye works, if I remember correctly. And then for the green, I didn't want something that was going to be too vibrant, so I chose sort of an olivey color. Uh, lily pad was what I chose. Well, I think that turned out nicely. Yeah. So that is a finish. Two finishes. And this one is going to be framed eventually. The cuckoo bird is so small, I, I might want to frame it. I might want to just 
turn it into like a little cushion thing to put in a dough bowl that I don't have. <laughs> yes. I don't know. I was thinking about what I wanted to do with all these things that I want to stitch. And there are obviously going to be some things that need to be framed. All the hats, uh, you know, all the larger samplers, anything like that, those need to be framed. But because I have basically nothing on my walls, I, I almost think it would be hard to like, okay, where does the first one go? Where does the second one go? Where do, cause I think about this. I'm like, where do I start? So what I have decided to do to make it all easier on myself is in about 12 to 18 months or so, I think maybe by the end of next year, I'm going to collect everything that I have finished that I want to have framed and I'm gonna send that grouping off to a proper framer, somebody who has experience working with needlework. Uh, I had this framed at Michael's and the two baby samplers that I made for friends of ours, I had those framed at Michael's and they're fine, but I'd like, I would like somebody, you know, who specializes in working with needlework. Uh, anyway, all this to say that I wanna send a group of things off to a framer so that I get a group of things back and then maybe already I've got you know a good portion of one wall would be covered because I think when I when I have multiple things together at one time I'm pretty good at putting them together making them look you know cohesive make it look nice but when you just have one item and then you gotta put another one and then how are you planning for what comes next I don't know so once I have at, even at just half a dozen items or something, then I think it'll be easier to add things into that grouping, right? So that was my idea that I'll send off things to be framed next year and we just won't talk about how much it costs, right, Ryan? It costs what it what costs. Think about how many miles you'll earn. <laughs> so we'll do that. And then, well, speaking of Ryan, I'll show you my whip now. Uh, so in the last three weeks, it has been a busy three weeks. The only things I've been working on are the cuckoo bird, maker and mender, that cute little llama, and then the sampler that I'm making to commemorate uh, our anniversary. So the four year anniversary, which is what we have coming up, is traditionally the linen and or silk anniversary. So I found this pattern on Etsy. Uh, Stitches Through the Years is the shop name and it had this saying, a home is made of wood and stone but only love can make it a home. And then I extended the border past this house so that I could include our names and our wedding date and the city in which we got married. And this is a 40 count and I'm using Belle Soie. Belsois silks on linen so that works out so and it's not I don't know it's not like a not necessarily like a gift to Ryan or for Ryan I don't know I don't know that we're really doing gifts so I got, I got a text from my sales rep at, at Tiffany my sales rep <laughs> a sales rep my sales rep and he texts me and he's like hi I hope you and Ryan are doing well and I know your anniversary is coming up so if you want me to send Ryan any wish list items let me know <laughs> when I stopped laughing I, I replied to him and I said thank you very much Paul and we just left it there but uh, I hoped to have this finished and framed before our anniversary so like it could be up on our anniversary and wouldn't that be cute but as I say I don't want to just frame and put up one item I want to put up like a grouping of items even with photos I need to have a bunch of photos printed and then frame them all at once and then put them up instead of this like one at a time thing it's just not working uh, but anyway the Belle Soie silks that I'm using these are the first silks that I've used. Since then, I've used the 103s from Obera Swa, and those are so nice. These are nice too, though. They, they glide beautifully, and they're so soft. 
I keep doing this. They were in such a mess. And so I put them on floss drops and now I just keep petting them. It's like that scene in Amelie when she puts her hands in the peas. I just can't stop. <laughs> Feels so good. So, and it looks so pretty. So I am reasonably happy with this piece. She, uh, the, the designer, she stitched it with over dyed cottons and you get more of a vari variegation with that. I'm not really seeing it with the silks as much, um, but it is what it is. You get what you get. So that's the only thing I've made progress on. And um, God, I just keep picking it up and putting it down. Uh, but the only thing I've, the only progress I've made actually is a little bit that I did this morning. I stitched the flowers in this green border and then I finished the flowers in this potted tree. But I think that, you know, for a couple hours, that's pretty good. So I feel like I can, I feel like I can at least finish the stitching before the 5th of July. I think I should be able to like show this as a finished piece on our anniversary. There we go, honey. I like that okay so I've showed you my two finishes and the one whip that I've been working on I have uh, I have made some purchases and so I've got things that I can get to things that I'm excited about obviously my next big thing is gonna be Hannah Campbell I've got the fabric already and I've got the hundred threes and I'm very excited about that I think it's gonna be great uh, so I'm gonna get started on that but then there are some smaller items that will be easy to, you know, stitch in the interim, I guess. And pardon me, but I'm like suffering from dry throat here. So here's my, here's my advertisement. Ryan says I should be in a Coca-Cola commercial. That word was supposed to be commercial, by the way. He's like, how do you drink Coke like that? I'm like you're in a commercial. You can see it pouring into your mouth. So the Australians that we had stay with us, this was right before the 500. They came from Sydney to go to the 500. And uh, they walk in one night and they're holding beer and Coke. <laughs> and I got really excited about the Coke. And uh, Kitch, the one guy, he, he was like, well, I asked Ryan what kind of beer you like. <laughs> but he told me you drink exclusively milk and Coke. And I was like, He's not wrong. <laughs> so they brought me some Coke and I was very excited. Um, so pardon me if I have to drink, take a drink every once in a while. So let me show you my purchases. Uh, let's see, as I say, I, I got back from France and I was able to find just a few things there. It was really hard to find anything stitchy. Uh, we stayed in the Le Mans area, we went, for the 24 hours of Le Mans, the, the race, the sports car race. And we did not stay in Paris. Uh, we, you know, got off the plane and drove to Le Mans. We stopped in Chartres on the way. Uh, and then one day we took a day trip to Bayeux. And then also on that same day that we went up to Bayeux, which is in Bordeaux, we went to Omaha Beach and uh, had a look around there for a little bit. But I will show you the few things that I managed to buy in France. So in Le Mans, we stopped at an antique shop that was so cool. It smelled like old books. And uh, like, I mean, you know that smell, but I think the place that embodies it the most, if you've ever been to Trinity College in Dublin, that smell, that old musty book smell. Anyway, so this antique store had it, had that eau de livre. Uh, and one of the things that was in there, as I was, you know, digging through boxes like a raccoon, I found a pile of old photographs and this woman, she was on, uh, her photo was in a pile. And I thought, no one knows who you are anymore, which is kind of sad. So you're coming home with me. There's a stamp on the back that says it was actually taken in Le Mans. And uh, it says 1860, but that may have been something to do with the photographer. But based on the dress, that seems to be about the right, the right day. 
And then I found some old postcards, um, a couple for people that I've already sent off, and then one for mom, act surprised. And then I found this one for myself. This is of the astronomical clock uh, from the Cathedral of Strasbourg. I've been to Strasbourg. I have not been inside the cathedral, but I've seen it. It's not a very big town, but look what it does. This was two euro. Like, that's coming home with me. So I don't know if I can really frame this because of course I'm gonna wanna play with it. <laughs> it's so cool. Very cool. So I got that. And then also in that same antique shop, I found this. Cathédrale du Mont. So this is old photographs of the Le Mont Cathedral. And it's held together by what well, looks like a little piece of wool thread that is it's on its way out, I tell you. But this was cool. So it was only 12 euro. And it had to come home. I felt like I, you know, I didn't spend a ton of money in France, but I found some cool little gems. Uh, and then, as I say, we went up to Bayou, which is in Bordeaux, in the Bordeaux area. And uh, Ryan said that he wanted to go see this Bayou tapestry. Okay, what is it? I, well, I can go to a museum, I don't care. And uh, he said that it's, you know, he's, besides sports car racing and indie car racing. He really loves history and military history and he reads all this stuff. And uh, so he knew about this thing because it, it depicts the events leading up to the Battle of Hastings, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly. And the tapestry itself dates from about 1066. That's what they're guessing, but it's really old. And uh, you weren't allowed to take photographs within uh, within the first floor of the museum where the tapestry is held. Uh, but I got a book, I got a book. And actually when Ryan was telling me about this thing, he was talking about the Bayou tapestry. And then I was looking at photos with him and I was like, that doesn't look like a tapestry, that looks like an embroidery. And sure enough, he keeps scrolling and it says, the Bayou tapestry is not actually a tapestry, but a work of embroidery. Yeah, okay, so it's all on linen and it was made using wool thread and it's huge it's huge it is over 60 meters long a meter is 3.28 feet just to let you know if you need that nugget <laughs> so you walk in and it's along this wall and you're like yeah it's long but then you keep walking and you realize it goes around a corner so it is, and I'll just open to a random page. It shows, it has scenes like this all throughout. Look, there are people gathered around a table. My favorite bits were the borders, the top and bottom borders, you see, because they were filled with animals, all sorts of weird animals. Some mythological and some, some real, real life animals. And I actually found, like, right across the street was a tiny little shop uh, that was called Bayou Broderie. Embroidery. And they sold kits to make your own section of the Bayou Tapestry. But all of the kits were really big. And all of the kits included wool, of course, because you want to do it just like they did. Uh, and I was hoping that they had something that was small like one little lion or one little dog or something like that because I thought well I, I don't have any experience in embroidery but I could do something small like that and wouldn't that be cute and I could you know stick it on the Christmas tree because Ryan and I collect uh, Christmas ornaments from our various trips and I thought that would make for a good one from this trip but all of the kids as I say were really big it was like you know a whole ship with a dozen guys on it wants to make that somebody does somebody out there so I think if you go to Bayou which is b-a-y-e-u-x dash broderie which is b-r-o-d-e-r-i-e dot com or dot f-r you will find their website and they ship internationally so if you're interested in one of these kits 
have at it. They've got stuff. I was hoping that they would have some other things. Like I was hoping that would be the place that I would find Saju scissors or Saju anything really, or just something little, some little trinket I could pick up like a, a needle case or a pin cushion or something. But they seriously had hoops and kits. Well, I don't need any more hoops and I wasn't gonna buy a kit for something I knew I was never gonna make. But also if you're interested in this book, uh, I got it for 20 bucks and you might be able to find it online if you're interested. Uh, now, when you go upstairs in the museum, they have some displays of, uh, you know, information on the fibers that were used and the, uh, like the linen and uh, how they dyed the wool and stuff. And that was all really interesting. And then they had information on the buy you a stitch so it was a particular it's more like a collection of stitches it's like a three-step stitch that was used to fill in these large areas with color because you figure the horses on this thing for example the horses they're like this big and they were all filled in with wool so this is my i made this little thing here to show you the buy you stitch so you do a satin stitch which is the red bits and then you have the white stitches. I mean, it would all be the same color, obviously, but this is just to illustrate the bayou stitch. And then the white that's coming down, those are the frets. And then it's kind of hard to see. I thought it would be easier to see the gold pico stitches to hold down the frets. And so all of this holds down the satin stitches. So it's not just all, you know, how they get. So that is the bayou stitch. I don't know how to say stitch in French. I could say cross stitch, that's point de croix, but there's not actually the word, unless it's point, it's point. Okay, <laughs> that's your French lesson for today. So I got those items. And as I say, it was hard to find stitchy stuff, but the one I did find in a grocery store Marquoire samplers and belles lettres. And it's funny that they put samplers on here because Marquoire means samplers. This is just a collection of, you know, simple samplers with like some flower motifs and, and alphabets. And it was only 10 bucks. And, and we were like on our way to the grocery store and I happened to find it. Uh, so I just grabbed it and, and we left <laughs> with a donkey. That's so funny. And I don't know that I'm ever going to stitch any of these in their entirety, but I did already use a couple letters to make the little gifty things, the little trinkets, doodads, whatever, that I sent out. Uh, I used two letters for monograms out of here. And, you know, I figured because every once in a while I want a, I want an alphabet. I want to do some, you know, I need to stitch something and personalize it. And I want a particular alphabet. Well, there's like a million alphabets online. I don't want to look through all that. So I figured if I have this, this is a good resource. Just pick something out of there. That's good. Got that. And then one last thing also I got in France. We, I managed to find sort of a craft shop in Le Mans, but it was, it was very small and they sold mostly yarn. But... They did have like an old box of crap for sale that I dug through and I found some buttons. And when I found these, I thought, oh, wouldn't those be good for that? I knew about this pattern. I knew that it existed. I did not own it yet, but when I saw the buttons, I was like, I'm gonna get the buttons and then I'm gonna order that pattern. This is I Collect by Brenda Gervais. It was pretty cute. Yeah. I just like, I like the idea of saying, I got those buttons in France. Probably made in China. I mean, they seem old. They sure were dirty. So I boiled some water and cleaned them up. And they feel like they're made out of shell. I mean, there's some weight to them. So they're nice. I thought that would go well on there. So that's what I got in France. It was a long trip. <laughs> it was a long trip. 
And then back at the end of April into early May, Ryan and I went to New Orleans, which I think I mentioned on a previous video, but I did manage to get a couple things there. So I wanted to, wanted to show you that. Uh, one, Ryan had to work. So he spent all of our days there at the track. Uh, but one day I just decided I wasn't going to the racetrack, which turned out to be a really good decision because it rained most of that day. I walked around the French Quarter in the morning and then went back to the hotel and stitched. And then it poured down raining. So I'm so glad that I didn't bother going to the track because I would have just been sitting in the hospitality tent. Bored out of my gourd. Uh, anyway, all this to say, I found a stitchy shop in the French Quarter. They, again, sold mostly yarn and uh, had some needlepoint stuff, actually quite a bit of needlepoint stuff. And then just like one little basket full of cross stitch patterns. And none of them were anything you could get anywhere else or online. Like it was very specific, as you can see. This is by Leslie Risters. And this says Café du Monde. And she's got a series, so there are other restaurants or things that are very New Orleans specific that are featured in her designs. But Café du Monde is the only one of her designs that featured a, a restaurant or something that Ryan and I had actually been to. So you may have heard of them. They're really famous for their chicory coffee and beignet. And you can actually get their, their coffee and their beignet mix at a lot of grocery stores if you're interested in doing that. And then I also got this Thread Keep. It has a lobster on it and it says quarter stitch. I got my mom a, uh, what was that thing, mom? Oh, it was a needle gauge for knitting needles. Like she needs that. She knows what size her needles are, but it was cute and it had a bumblebee on it. I could have gotten her one with a lobster on it, but I didn't think she'd really care for that. Um, sorry, it's dry mouth. And then also in uh, in New Orleans, there's this old bookstore. It's on Decatur. Oh, which I should tell you, Quarter Stitch, if you go to New Orleans, it's on Chartres, like the city. C-H-A-R-T-R-E-S. Uh, but then on Decatur is this really old bookshop. It's in a really old building, and I think one day it's just going to collapse. <sighs> Hopefully not with me in it. Uh, and it's, it's cool. It's a cool place. I got, uh, I got a copy of Collected Works of Voltaire in French. So, uh, and I, it's funny, I opened it up and I found Candide, which I have read about three times. And so I read the first paragraph and I was like, oh yeah, I remember this. So, uh, that's one thing they don't tell you when you're learning a language. I don't know if anybody else has ever done this, but years ago, you know, I was trying to work on my proficiency in French. And so what I did was I ordered Harry Potter in French. And then I read Harry Potter in English. And then I read Harry Potter in French. So that it's like I had just read it. I know the set. I know the sentences. I know what's happening. Obviously, I've read those books tons of times. Uh, but when I was reading it in French, it was so easy for me to learn the words that I otherwise would not have known because I've already got the context. And so it's like, now I know the word for owl because what do they talk about a lot in Harry Potter? Owls are all over the place. And I learned the word for twins because of Fred and George and like stuff like that. And so when I found this collected works of Voltaire, I thought, oh, well, I can just read Candide again. And then I can read Candide in French. And um, so funny, my French teacher in college, she called it garbage. <laughs> she did not like Voltaire. <laughs> Oh, but it's an easy read and it it's funny well that's not really the point the point is I found this my uh my youngest son who's now nine but was eight at the time asked for a dollhouse for Christmas and I've always wanted to make a dollhouse like you know the big one and the like second empire style and you know with all the wallpaper and you have to glue the whole thing together and paint it and everything like what Monica has but for him I sort of guided him toward one of those snap and click together ones 
and he seemed very happy with that. Uh, he has not put the dollhouse together, but we also got the furniture set. And the furniture set, he's made all those himself. He like click, you know, pushes out all the pieces and then clicks them together and then he paints them. And then what he started to do with the bed and the other furniture, uh, like there's a hutch and he wanted to fill it with linens. And so my mom, who is a quilter, gave him like scraps of fabric and stuff. And it's amazing. You know, he picked out a piece to make a, a bed cover and uh, he's like filled his little linen hutch and not just stacking pieces of fabric, but like rolling certain things and folding them and putting it and it looks lived in and he's, he's very creative and I, and I love it. So I found this at Beckham's Books on Decatur in New Orleans. It is from 1979. It's from 1979 and uh, it's iron on transfers and it's never been used. And I figured even if they don't work perfectly well, it's still so cool. And you can like, you can iron them on to your fabric and then stitch over the pattern obviously. And you'll have this embroidered, you know, thing that looks like brocade or something. But my favorite, is the tiger rug. I think he'll love that. So Morris has not gotten this yet, but he will. I'm going to give it to him and then say, okay, let's go buy a lot of floss and he'll be so excited. And it's like Morris Gibb, not Morris the cat, in case you care. Okay. So that, uh, that was a fun find and it was only two bucks. It was only two bucks. If you go up to the second floor in the back right corner, there's a section for crafts and things and there were a few cross stitch things but nothing I was really excited about and nothing I was gonna try to shove in my suitcase but that for two bucks yeah that came home okay uh that was my my purchases from New Orleans so now I guess my last batch of purchases are from House of Stitches uh which is located in Laporte Indiana which is up north. I mean, it would be a hike for me. But on Monday, I went to visit our friends John and Alex to meet their baby boy Luca and uh, give them their baby sampler. And I did give them their baby sampler and we had some happy tears and we had some sad tears for various reasons. But that kid is so stinking cute. Oh my goodness. So it was nice to visit with them. I just stayed the one night and hung out and I helped like a tiny bit, but I got lots of baby snuggles and lots of baby smiles and it was a very nice visit. But on my way to visit them in Northbrook, I stopped in Laporte to go to House of Stitches. I had heard about it. And actually I think uh, Needlework Retailer featured them this week as their featured LNS. And I found, I walked in and the first thing I saw was this like whole display of sweetheart tree stuff, this stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh. And they had, I don't know if you're familiar, but sweetheart tree, of course it was years and years ago. They did a collection of 12 for the 12 days of Christmas. And so, you know, the one has a partridge and so on and so forth. And they had all 12 of them. And I had tried to find these on eBay and, you know, could only find like one through four or seven and nine or something like that. And so when I walked in and I saw all 12 of those, I was like, oh man, I want those. But they're $9 a piece. So like, you got to cool your jets, Audrey. So I did not get those. Uh, but they had a nice collect. You could tell that some stuff had been there for a couple decades. But then they've got new stuff too. too. Uh, as I was walking around, I saw this. And I just grabbed it because there are different pair patterns. Like there's a blue work pairs and then there's another designer that has a couple individual pairs. But this one I saw and I thought, I'll just get that. I don't really care about the red, the blue work versus the red work. Which one do I prefer? No, this is cute. And I had talked about using this French pair from number 12 Stitch Co. to do some pairs. So, I mean, these are done in red, which is super cute. But I'm going to do mine in green, and I'm going to use Overa Spa. This is 40 count, so the 103s will work great. And this is 274. 
It's a really nice olive green. I don't remember if this is from Hannah Campbell or the Alexanders, but if you have Hannah Campbell or the Alexanders kitted up, you may have this color, but something similar. But I really like that, so I'm excited about that. And I think these will stitch up so quickly, right? Especially this one. I was watching Katie Strachan's last video. Maybe it was one before. And uh, she was talking about how she hates doing alphabets and words because she starts the thread anew for each letter. Just carry it. <laughs> then you wouldn't hate them so much. But her backs are very tidy. So I can see, like, you're never going to see any extra thread through her linen, right? She shows her backs and it's like, it looks like the fronts, but she's, she's very talented. So I think maybe I could be more careful about stuff like that, but <laughs> the same thing, the same thing when my father-in-law asked me if I wanted to drive to Florida in the RV. And I was like, no, Bruce, I'm going to fly. I've got things to do. <laughs> like, no, I'm going to carry my thread. <laughs> Thank you very much. And that alphabet's going to be done in no time. Uh, also at House of Stitches, I found this. This is The Sewing Bird by Brenda Gervais. And I think it's going to be real cute. Like, you know, on, on display, sort of near my maker and mender. How cute. Uh, this one I didn't even know existed. I mean, you guys probably all know about it. You're like, that's old news, Audrey. What year is this? Oh, it says copyright 2013. Okay, so it's like oldish. So I feel better. Yeah. I mean, it is old news. But like, it's re it's understandable that I wouldn't know about it. So I uh, put all the threads for this in my online shopping cart. <laughs> Uh, and then, speaking of Katie Strachan, oh, I found this at House of Stitches. This was such an impulse purchase. Like, I like scattered seed samplers, but this isn't, like, high on my scattered seed samplers wish list. It's cute. But Katie Strachan, she was talking about the kit that she's putting together for the Big Blue House drum. And... I wanted that kit and then I thought, you don't need that kit. You can just do it with the cottons, right? And then I watched her video and I was like, I'm gonna buy that. <laughs> I ordered it. But she was talking about making your stash work for you. So you don't need to buy a duplicate of a color that you already have just to kit up a different thing, right? So she was talking about how for the big blue drum or the big blue house drum, you know, you'd have almost every color that you need for this because you've got, you'll have two blues and two greens and a light gray. So all you have to buy is a dark gray and then you're set. But, so I bought this and then I was like, but I, I still need the dark gray. And then what linen am I going to put it on? And then I got to finish it. Huh. That's another thing I was thinking about. All these things that I want to have framed and in like a year, year and a half, or two. I'm going to send them all off to a framer all at once. And I was kind of thinking about that for the smalls as well. Mom is going to help me with those itty bitty kitty things, the two that I'm going to have done before I see her next week. But then what about all these other things? Do I really? No, I don't want to. I'm going to get, I'm going to get on, I'm going to find a finisher who actually has availability. And then maybe I can reserve like a year in advance and say, I'm going to send you a dozen things or something and then they'll all be done and I'll get happy mail. <laughs> That's the thing. Every time Brenda's like, I got this back from Joy. I'm like, oh, I want a Joy. Oh, oh speaking of Brenda, uh, this I actually ordered online, but it was very much like a, I saw Katie Heron wearing army pants and flip flops. So I bought army pants and flip flops. Brenda finished this stitched it and then had it made into a drum and it was so cool so when I saw this on Etsy I was like oh I can stitch it and I can have it made into a drum it's really cute yeah this is the Scarlet House and it's just called Samplers yeah uh and then still from House of Stitches I got two other things I got this Keeper of the Pins, which was actually on my radar. It was on my wish list. 
but but I saw this and I was like, oh man, I should have bought more buttons. Because, uh, cause, right, the buttons I, I bought in France, I'm gonna use for this. It's not like I need to make that little one and I can find more buttons anyway. But I do like this birdie and the pile of tomatoes on the spool. And I like, uh, this one is just an alphabet, right? Is that right? Yeah, that one's just an alphabet. And so I thought it was a cute little collection. So I got that from House of Stitches. And then this one, buy all the blackbird. I can't buy all the blackbird, <laughs> but I did buy this. Uh, it's a collection of six berries and each of the berries is on a different color linen. Uh, but there is some crossover between the threads. So it, there's like some cohesiveness. And then it was all finished with the same lace and ribbon on top. And the lace I actually already found. But this is lighter than they say. They say tan and this is like a ivory. So I'm going to see if I can tea dye it. I'm going to experiment with that. And this I was flipping through and I was like, yeah, that's cute. But the thing that really sold it was the pelican. <laughs> Weird birds. Sensing a theme here. <laughs> so that was really cute. And uh, have you seen pelicans in person? They're huge. They're huge. Ryan and I were, uh, we were at a function, I'll just say that, and uh, of a hotel in Daytona Beach. And way almost on the top floor, and there's no blinds or anything, so you can see very clearly out onto the ocean. And this flock of pelicans comes by. They're massive. It was startling, but cool. Very majestic. <laughs> Unlike me. Okay. Oh, and then another purchase that I was very excited about. Yeah. Uh, watching... Watching Floss Tube, and they're talking about this RNR Woodworks KY. This is to help you cut your floss into perfect 18 inch lengths, right? That's a good length to stitch with. And I thought, I don't need that. I can just measure and cut. Well, I'm on the plane to New Jersey and then on to Charles de Gaulle. And I really wish I would have had this because I'm like trying to cut usable lengths of thread on the yeah so I this is it's a game changer yeah so glad I bought that it was like eight bucks you know you pay almost as much for shipping as you do for the thing and that was a good purchase it was it was good uh this is Jacobian I think is the stain that I got it's like a nice old looking brown color so I got that okay I think I showed you all of my purchases and uh, I think I talked about my pin that I made. And uh, art base again is where I got that frame. And then I, uh, let's see, I show you my finishes and I showed you the one thing that I've been working on, the one thing that I got progress on, made progress on, I should say. So I guess the thing that I wanted to talk about then uh, were was my plans. So still looking at going to a retreat later this year. I'm, there's one in November that's like, it's like penciled in. Of course, registration isn't even open yet, so I can't do anything. But that's the one that I'm thinking if I get to go to uh, a retreat this year, that'll be in November. Before Thanksgiving and, and after Thanksgiving, again, Ryan and I have this thing. It's like never stops, I swear. Uh, but it's good. He's busy. Stitching gets paid for. <laughs> so, uh, but I was thinking about what I wanted to have with me when I went to a, a retreat. And the thing, you know, you need like one project maybe because you're going to buy a mess load of crap there and they give you kits. You know, they give you stuff to work on while you're there, right? That's what I'm gleaning. Uh, and then you might want to bring like a fancy pair of scissors, which I still don't have a fancy pair of scissors, but again, they're like all this crap is in my, in my various online cards and will one day be purchased. Um, uh, oh, which Laura recommended Dovo scissors and Laura, I think the silver needle has them and they're like an anniversary style 
if you go to the scissors, they're like right at the top and they're like goldish and there's a straight blade and a curved blade. And I mean, they're not cheap, but yeah, those were kind of in my, you know, in my mind. Uh, okay, so scissors and one thing to work on and maybe like a cute little case and a, and a, a bag, project bags and stuff. But one thing that I kept coming across that I thought would be nice to have is a stitcher's mat. So I found, you know, when you search Stitcher's Mat on Etsy, like Stitcher's Mat pattern, you there's like the same two things that keep coming up. And one is from Scattered Seeds, and it was cute. And then something else, I, do, I don't remember the designer, but I was, you know, I need it to work for me. I want it to be mostly flat. I don't want like this giant pin cushion on it. Of course I could make it, you know, flatter if I want to. But I did find, eventually I found a pattern that I really liked from Heartstring Samplery. So that uh, has been ordered and that's on its way to me and I'll share that with you uh, on my next video. And I'll talk to you about how I'm going to turn that into a stitcher's mat. And I have picked out some backing fabric and I'm gonna figure out how to put this all together. And I'm thinking about putting a ribbon on it so that I could roll it up and then tie it with the ribbon. And I was thinking about uh, how I'm going to make a sort of, uh, like a little spot to stick pins in, whether it's like a proper cushion or if it's just gonna be like a piece of felt and wool or something like that. So that's one thing that I want to work on that's not going to be framed, right? It's actually gonna be three-dimensional item I guess that's gonna go with me on retreats if I go on retreats okay and then I've got some other things on my wish list but I'm afraid they'll show up moms <laughs> I said that last time and mom just like buys a mess of crap but you know I'm her only kid and she likes to shop and she likes to buy things I mean I'm the same way too like I see stuff for my kids and the thing that keeps me from buying a bunch of crap for my kids is like, well, we don't need all this in the house, right? But also I don't want them to have this expectation that they're going to, you know, they're going to get something all the time for any, you know, they should, you gotta limit it, right? So I'm also trying to limit my own, my own stitchy purchases. So anyway, <laughs> it's been a day. It's been a day. I hope you guys enjoyed my video. Uh, thank you again to everyone who reached out, uh, people who commented, found me on Instagram. I am at Stitch Stitch Bead on Instagram, Audrey Marine, that's M-Y-R-E-H-N. Maybe I should stop spelling it. You guys know who I am if you, bo if you bothered to make it to this third video. Uh, but I just wanna thank you again for watching and uh, and I am enjoying watching YouTube as well. I know I I can't always remember to mention the the people and the videos that I'm watching, uh, but I am I'm getting around on YouTube. I'm I'm seeing some different things and I'm getting excited about things and it's giving me inspiration and and uh, it's it's been fun. This is a this is an adventure. It's a journey, right? I'm not going to be perfectly polished uh on just my third episode but i hope you guys are in, enjoying what i'm putting together here so i am going to attempt to get this uploaded before midnight we'll see i just want to say thank you again and uh, i'll see you in three weeks which will be in july and i actually had a comment from somebody a couple weeks ago who said well you should do christmas in july and you should you know show all your mill hill ornaments because like this mill hill llama they they make ornaments like larger ornaments and i have made a lot of those so i think in july i will absolutely do that we'll have christmas in july and i'll show you all the ornaments that i've made and hopefully it'll inspire you uh they're they're fun little ornaments and they're really easy to make and the kits that come with everything you need uh are are pretty inexpensive as far as stitchy stuff goes so i hope i hope you'll enjoy that i hope you'll come back again in three weeks so until then Happy stitching!